always look forward to these stakeholders meetings. It's an opportunity for us to share what's been happening, but then also to hear back uh, from you, <coughs> stakeholders, and Diversion First. It is a great program, something that we're really very proud of. It has been a sea change, a sea change in how we treat individuals <coughs> who have mental illness. You know, before this program started, uh, if you uh, did not have financial means, you may end up in jail for up to four months awaiting your trial because you couldn't post bond. And uh, for everyone else, that's about, um, that's about a $25,000 tab to pay for four months of jail uh, for somebody. Um, and for a tenth of that cost, we can have somebody get the outpatient treatment that they need. During my days as a young deputy sheriff and walking the hallways of the adult detention center, I saw firsthand, day in and day out, what damage was done to folks that truly, truly, treated, truly needed uh, mental health treatment. And it, when it becomes too easy to bring someone to jail, we know we have a problem. So I am um, elated that in two short years we have come incredibly far. And, you know, certainly we have uh, folks in the jail that are not eligible for diversion. But that doesn't mean that we stop there. What it means is that with the third part of the sequential intercept model, we continue to work very hard with our partners from the CSB, from court services, of course our judges who are here this evening, our magistrates, and we try to find an alternative to um, get folks the treatment they need through supervised release. So um, I'm just proud to be a part of something that's certainly bigger than me. Um, it's bigger than all of us, and again, it's about human capital, and I'm not sure how you can put a price on human capital, but at the end of the day, we're doing our very best, and um, I look forward to this continuing, and again, as we've said many times, being the role model, not only for the Commonwealth, but also for the United States.